Hello, my name's Rand Telford. Um, I just want to share with you today just what the, the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me and how he's changed my life from the inside out. Just took me from, from where I was, just lost in sin. Alcohol, drugs, sleeping around, just sexual immorality, New Age, um, sort of got caught up while witchcraft performed on me, all these sort of things. Just, just growing up in a in a Christian household, and just how I knew, I knew there had to be a God, and I knew Jesus was real. But it just wasn't my time to 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 come to know him personally. So I just wanna I just wanna talk to you about my life just from a from a young boy uh, up until until now. So it's just it says just in the in the word here it says Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen there, if any man or woman be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Once we give our life to Christ, once, once Christ enters our life, he changes everything. He changes us from the inside out. All things become new. There should be a change. Our thought process, our emotions, our mood. Like I'm not saying we become totally sinless but we do sin less and um, just let me just take you on the journey of where God has took me so just before we go any further um, I'd just like to, to open up in prayer just just open up in prayer to the Lord our Lord Jesus Christ eternal heavenly father holy spirit Lord thank you Lord for thank you Lord for putting it on me putting it on my heart, Lord, to, to just testify of what you have done in my life, Lord. And not only in my life, but in, in people around me, Lord. And where people have, have seen the change within me, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. And I just pray, Lord, that you just draw people in, Lord. You just... um. That pe people will 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 switch this on, or it'll be passed on to other people, and when they hear it, that they they can relate to it. And the reason why they can relate is because we all sin. We're all we're all delved in sin, and we're blinded to the world. We're blinded by the 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 wiles of the devil until that veil is lifted, Lord, and until you. You show us our weaknesses and how much we need you, Lord. So just ask, Lord, that you just be with me here throughout throughout this testimony of your loving, saving, keeping grace. We just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So just as I was saying, um, I grew up. I grew up in a Christian household, and I grew up. In a small estate in uh, in Northern Ireland, just in case you's from America and Australia and whoever else is listening, you, you just can't um, make out the accent. I went to uh, was, was brought up in the, the Bathney Free Presbyterian Church, and I'm sure even the even the unsaved know that Bathney. If you go to Bathany, you will hear the full counsel of the gospel. You will hear the, the full counsel of God <clears throat> that uh, sin is preached against. Christ is preached. Christ crucified is preached. And it says, it says in the word here, in uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and 6, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. And that is so true. Because even whenever I 
I have come to know Christ. Um, I'll just say, today is my second birthday. And I know what you're thinking. You're, probably, you're, you're thinking, what do you mean second birthday? Sure, you look about 40. Well, that, that would be correct. But um, it's my second spiritual birthday. It's, it's been two, two years today since I come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I didn't enjoy church at all. Um, I would have preferred to be at home from a young boy playing with my toys and whatever. And then as I got older, um, I, I was sent to, to Sunday school. Um, I just had no time for the Sunday school. But, but then once I got into an uh, old enough class, we started doing a thing called sword drill. I think around the age of maybe seven, we started doing a thing called sword drill. And what this was, was the the um, Sunday school teacher would have got all of the the children, the kids, to, to put the, the Bible on the floor with the book closed. And he would have read out a book along with the chapter and the verse. And the first person to pick up this Bible, open it up, stand up and read the scripture would have won themselves a packet of Rolos or a packet of Toffos or something. like that. This was like my... This is what I looked forward to on a Sunday, was going and just winning a packet of sweets, a packet of Toffos or something. And uh, it was actually quite fun. Um, just back then, like I do remember all the wee, the wee stories of like Jonah and the whale and um, how God used the, the donkey to, to speak to, to people and just the, all the wee, the wee Bible stories about the woman who lost her lost her coin and the parable of the um the prodigal son and stuff but uh, so yeah that's what I loved about um Sunday school but then then that wasn't it we had to go to the the Sunday morning service after that that's just oh I was like have I not been the church enough so I'm just glad that I had those sweets to sort of get me through that that service and uh, would have got restless and fell asleep and my dad would have been nudging me to wake me up causing the scene and everything and um, yeah just had no interest in, in going to any Sunday service or whatever um, but once the, the service was over we would have went home all sitting around the table, what I what I got our big uh, Sunday roast without fail every Sunday Sunday roast, and then couldn't wait to get the dinner eat and go out and play with my friends on a Sunday, whether it was playing basketball, street hockey, um, climbing trees, you name it, whatever we all used to do as kids. Uh, if there's people, millennials are listening to this now, they're they're like what I don't even. I've probably never done any of that stuff but uh yeah so just we'll just move on Tanya um my childhood like I, I did have a, a happy childhood and I actually feel sorry for for kids in this this day and age where everybody's just glued to their their gaming consoles and they never want to leave the house and it's just so much depression and and everything going on in such a young age, and um, I'm just glad that I that I had such a an outgoing um, spirit. You could say I just had I just loved to be out with my friends and just playing and and you couldn't have kept me in the house and uh, I just loved my childhood. It was brilliant. Um, but around the age of nine or ten. Uh, my parents decided that they were they were going to divorce and they were going to separate, and obviously this hurt me. But I didn't, I didn't let it show. I remember there was one time, there was what there was one night, my mum and my dad had called. Um, oh, I have two older brothers, by the way. I have a I have a big family and sort of an extended family, and um, so my my mum and dad had uh, three boys. So it was Orn would be the oldest, and then Kyle, and then me, I'd be the youngest. I remember um, my mum and my dad called 
Orn and Kyle down round the table and then called me round and I came down and I seen everybody sitting there and I was what was going on as as playing something on the PlayStation and they told me that everything was just so sort of strange, like the atmosphere and they said that they were they were gonna separate and I just played it off and said, Right, okay, can I get back to my, my game now? And so yeah, going ahead. So that was it. I never really dealt with it. It was just accepted it. But like I had known other um families who who the parents had separated and stuff, and I just thought this is just normal. Like if your parents stick together, then th that's fine. Or if it works out, it's fine. Um, but if it if they separate, then then so be it. So that was just the way that I just dealt with that. So my mum decided she was going to move out and uh, me and my two brothers moved in or moved moved out of the family home and moved in with my mum so there was two family homes there and around the age of 11 or 12 I started smoking and drinking and doing things I shouldn't have done just being a wee tour away. age 15 my mum was diagnosed with cancer in, in the womb on the ovaries. Um while I was sort of got into got into company, but I think it was more myself I even wanted to try. I, I ended up getting mixed up with class A drugs and I just I just went heavier on, on the drugs. I started off taking drugs just for the just for the the buzz, as you would say, and for the party scene, and just to, to escape life and, and have fun. But then when, when I found out about my mum's cancer, I just went heavier on the drugs, um, just to block out pain and just escape reality, to be honest. Um, so, you know, I had seen my mum starting to, to change in terms of, she was on a lot of medication and steroids, and she went from a, a thin... She went from being thin to gaining weight and losing all of her hair on her head, losing her, her eyebrows and stuff. And she's just, she just, you know, started to change. And when I seen her, I, I just always could imagine, she, you know, she was in a lot of pain just from the, the changes that I was seeing. Um, So, like, when my brother was 17, so my older brother's about... I think he was about five and a half years older, six years older than me. So when he turned six, 17, um, I remember them talking and there was a pastor and and I didn't even know what a pastor was. I heard a reverend, but he had, Orn had got saved and then my mum had got saved that same year. And I, I just seen, I just started to see this change and I was like, oh no, like I'll not be able to get away with half the stuff that I get away with here. My mum's going to come really strict and my brother's going to be real strict and I can't do this and I can't do that there and oh no, like it's just it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a very strict household and um what it costs away. I just it was the complete opposite to be honest. Like there was more love shown in the house. Not that there wasn't love shown in the house, but I just seen something different in my mum. On, on my brother Orn that they had something that I wanted and I was envious of it I coveted it and I was just going deeper into the world and just doing what your typical teenager would, would be doing in, in these days out drinking and taking drugs and sleeping around and, and just, being, just being a wee terror or as, as what people would say just out having fun but there is pleasure in sin, but it only it only lasts for a season. Um and just uh So just there it says in the word here also, and this is actually biblical, Hebrews in the book of Hebrews eleven twenty five, choosing rather to suffer affliction with people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So there, there is sin to be, there is pleasure to be found 
in sin and if people say that that they didn't enjoy sinning or that, that that they didn't enjoy their sin i would have to disagree with them and probably say they're they're lying to themselves but just um just moving on uh just back in in 2010 um i was around 19 years of age mum had been diagnosed uh three times she'd been diagnosed with cancer and my life was just spiraling out, out of control just drinking drugs and, and just using people and they were using me getting into relationships and just just doing what what i what i wanted to, to please myself and um just out having fun just enjoying myself um um so 2010 um i was working away i that's one thing about me like I, i've always worked from the age of 16 i was a chef and i was working in cafes hotels bistros um you know, i was always working chefing but just from me drinking and taking drugs and partying so much and uh just the, with the sort of attitude that i had i was always was constantly losing jobs um, so 2010, um, we had got news that my mum had took a turn for the worst. I had been up seeing my mum on the Saturday, and from the Saturday till the Sunday, I'd, I, I'd been working flat out, and um, my mum had took a turn for the worst. So we had went up to, to the hospital, and we had been told that she only had a couple of hours to live, and... I was just a total shock to everybody, but yeah, so my mum had passed away within a couple of hours there. She she was on an oxygen machine and um I believe she held on or she was given the power and the strength to to hold on. I believe God allowed her to hold on until we all um got there because we all came up individually and we all got to say our goodbyes on um and she passed away but now i know that that fiery last breath that she took that she was absent with the body absent from the body and she's present with the lord hallelujah praise the lord um so my mum had always said um to her partner at the time that if i continue on the way that i'm going and if i become out of control just to just to, to put me out or to send me down to my dad's house and sadly that's that's what it took that's what actually had to happen for me to sort of see a bit of sense and um you know i don't hold grudges i i done me the world of good i had to go down and, and live with my dad and um my dad just welcome welcomed me in after 13 years of not living with him just seeing him you know, here and there, uh, each week, um, that uh, it done me the world of good. I needed to needed to wise up. I needed to be taught a lesson. Um, and could I just could I just also add in there, you know, when when my mum was diagnosed with cancer, um, three times, and then she died the fourth time, and people would say, but if God was real, why would he let her suffer, and why, why would he do this, why would he do that, and God, God's ways are not our ways, God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and God could have saved many people through my mum's ministry of, of having cancer, and, and being ill, and it wasn't, I I know that it wasn't God that, that, um, made her become sick or or gave her the cancer or whatever we we are mortal bodies and it says says in the word that it is appointed on to man and woman uh to die whenever it says in the bible man it's referring to man and woman um so it's appointed on to man to die and there there will always be an eternity it's it's either an eternity with God or an eternity without God. And I just praise God. I just thank him that um, that moment that my mum took her last breath, there was no more pain. There was no more suffering. 
She took that last breath and God healed her once and for all, forever. She's with God right now. You get a brand new body. You're healed. No more suffering, no more pain. There's no sin in heaven. There's just total exuberance total love and joy and peace in heaven there's no sin can enter therefore there's no remembrance of sin we don't remember anything in the past from our sin and what a what a beautiful place i cannot wait to go there amen hallelujah um so i just just moving on i, I don't want everybody with just the sinful things i was getting up to um so here i am age 19 my mum has passed away um i've lost my job due to partying back living with my dad and i did get the suicidal thoughts i was even i was getting suicidal thoughts even during um whenever i was out partying and stuff and this was just if anybody knows and I, I totally, anybody taking drugs, I don't want anybody to go down the path that I was on. But if anybody's had a, a, a hangover, not only was I tr getting over a hangover, but you're also trying to overcome a come down. And there's thoughts going through my head on my mum's death and just all this here stuff. And... Um, I just praise God. I just thank God for getting me through it. Age 24. Um, remember there was one day I'd lost a job. And this was the last chefing job. And my brother says to me, what are you going to do? You can't keep losing your job or being made redundant and expecting dad to, to bail you out. And um, I always had money and always looked after myself. And... Um, I just decided, yeah, you're right. What will I do? And my brother, Kyle, was doing uh, computing. And uh, he was like a computer whiz kid. Often he says, why, why don't you get into computers? Because technology is progressing. And you need to get with it in the future and stuff. And why don't you do a computer course? So I went and done a computer course. And it was, it was one of the best things that, that I could have done. Because I remember I went in. I went in. I'm studying... Um, computer animation, multimedia, computer science and uh, I remember the, the first day I went in and it was just a half day and there was one guy sitting there in particular and they were all, they were all good guys, good, good funny guys, good crack and there was one guy in particular I sat beside him and uh, just had a laugh with him and he was a bit of a, a clown I'm just mucking about uh, the whole day on um, getting registered stuff and then my granny, sorry, said uh, later on, says, "Oh, there's uh, such and such goes to that their uh, that their school now, and they're studying computers or something." And then it just dawned on me that this guy who I was sitting beside was one of the guys who would have been competing against me in the sword drill to try and win a pack of toffos or win a, a pack of rollos, and. Um, I just clicked on who he was, and I was like, "Whoa, this this must be something. Something's happening here." So I just I just went along with it, and um, I just thank God for him. He was a born again Christian. He didn't just talk the talk, but he walked the walk. He 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 walked, and he talked, and he lived his life out. And Christ just Jesus just shone through him. But I I just seen something in him. I, I know that I'm talking now because I understand what what had happened but uh or, or, or i i have a relationship with christ now but back then i just knew there was something different and just through him jesus showed me my sinful ways um and he was just he was a good witness on to, on to people who weren't saved um and i was stuck with him from monday to friday so um you know, God God has a sense of humour and God knew what what he was doing and um yeah, so just I thank God for, for putting him and multiple other people over over the next few years following that, uh, and multiple jobs. I was just surrounded by born again Christians, you know, and 
it was just there was a sense of peace there and joy and I just seen these people, you know, weren't out every weekend making a, a you know a nuisance of themselves. They weren't out smoking and drinking and swearing every five minutes to, to have to have a laugh and they just they just live differently to me and I just it was pretty amazing to, to see. Um so like just at this stage I had experienced the sleeping around and pubs, clubs, partying. Um, I'd got gotten into fights as well. I was never really a fighter, but there was people wanted to start fights with me, and I was just not have. I wasn't gonna have it. And I was stubborn and and everything back then. And I just thank God that he's took that took that out of me, and in, in so much a sense, and um, I can turn the other cheek and I just bring it to God and just pray to God about it. It's just thank the Lord that he's always there. And one thing that I will tell you, folks, is. That people will let you down, man, woman, um, your parents could let you down, your brother, your sister, your your cousin, your school teacher, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whoever, your friend could let you down, but the Lord Jesus Christ will never let you down, ever. Um, he's never let me down once, and that's just why I love him so much. Um, so, uh, just God had been drawing me through through all these people, all different ways. And I just had a real sickener of my life. Um, like at this stage, I didn't have the suicidal thoughts anymore. But I wanted to do something about my life. I wanted to, I wanted to have purpose in life. I wanted to, to um, I wanted to experience what these born again Christians had, and I started to go to church, uh, by myself. Um, I started going to a Pentecostal church and sitting away out of the road stuff and. Just multiple times where when the music was playing and when when the when the pastor was preaching and I just seen people sold out for God and just you know with their hands up and just worshiping God and it was just there was something happening in the church service at that time and just just you know just had me crying just um it was just revealing my sinful ways and it was God saying to me are you gonna how long are you gonna continue down this path for um. Like I have, I have so much for you, and um, like if you would only just admit your weakness and just admit that you're helpless and hopeless, and you're just dust of the ground. It says in Genesis that the that, that man is just dust of the earth, but God loves us so much. Like how how amazing is that? The God of the universe that created everything, you know, created Adam out of, out of dust and breathed just breathed into his nostrils and you know god loves us so much um so i started exercising and started eating healthier um and then i got the stage where i got obsessed and i started eating um that clean where i was literally just eating fruit and veg and then I started eating like taking like herbs and stuff and detoxing my body and there, there's nothing wrong with detoxing your body, but it was, it was, what I had joined like a detox group, and this had started to lead me onto a different path where people were starting to talk about oh, like your pineal gland, and about decalcifying your pineal gland, and when you do that, which is like your your third eye, and when you do that, you become more spiritual. You're more you're more awake. You have an awakening and. You can travel to other kingdoms, and you can astral astral uh, plane project astral travel. They call it, and um, I was like freaked out to be honest. But uh, it was something sort of drawn me down down that path, and I was I had grown up in the in the, the Bethany Free Peace. I went to the the Pentecostal churches. I'd even got ninety two percent in my RE exam. Like about and it was about the the Holy Bible about Christ. It was about God, and I knew and I was even deceived and I was lured down that path where I wanted to um also travel. I wanted to go into other kingdoms. I wanted to um experience God. I didn't really believe in Buddhism. I didn't really believe in in Krishna and you know all this like 
Christ consciousness. It's all you hear about now is Christ consciousness. Um, and so that's that's the path that I started to go down. Um, and you know, I had, I had a couple of ailments in, in my body, and I even went. It was in Northern Ireland here. I went to two different people, one man and one woman, two separate people, two separate houses, and they performed something called a reiki, reiki on me, where they put their hands uh, over my eyes and stood behind me and started mumbling whatever it was, some chant or witchcraft, and um, I don't know, I don't know if it had a, a part to play on on my life. What had, what had happened after that? Um, I do believe God had His hand on me, um, and what do you call it? I I just want to say, everybody, please please stay away from tarot cards, and psychics, and on mediums, Ouija boards. You know, anyway, it's all from the pit. It's all from the pit of hell. This this is how people. People interact with demons. People can say that they can um, connect with uh, family members and that that they they know what you done a couple of years ago when you're going to hit the jackpot in a couple of years time and there's a pot of co- pot of gold and if there was a pot of gold uh, there that you were going to get, would do you not think these people would be away going to snatch it up? Just nonsense, to be honest. But uh, let me just turn to the scripture here and I just want just want to tell you so it says in the book of Matthew Matthew 24 24 for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect and when it talks about the very elect it's talking about the the elected people it's talking about the the, the born again Christians it's talking about people that have had a have a relationship with Jesus and then know Him as their Lord and their Savior. So that this is pretty serious stuff. Um, turn then to Leviticus nineteen and thirty one. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So familiar spirits. This is this is when psychics or mediums have a. a a demonic spirit and an evil spirit that are able to tell these people about you about your past and maybe make up stuff about the future and stuff and um god has made it clear here stay well clear well stay well well clear of it um so then moving on to first chronicles 10 and verses 13 14 so Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit. There's that familiar spirit again, to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore God slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Um, Deuteronomy 18 Verses 10 to 12. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. This is plain in the word. People people can choose to believe it or not. But I'm telling you now, folks, this is this is real stuff. And, you know, I just find it strange how people can believe in spirit guides. And they, they can, um, you know... They can watch paranormal activity films. They can watch, watch all these the, these films that are coming out now. It's all about spirituality, and um, they can believe in um, spirits guiding you. But when you mention anything about the Holy Spirit or about Jesus or God, and God is a spirit, by the way, and Jesus 
Jesus was spirit as well and the Holy Spirit and people just laugh and they just mock and just totally disregard it. Um, so uh, let me see. It says in, in uh, Micah, Micah 5 and 12 And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Ecclesiastes 9 and 5 um, For the living know that they shall die but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Now, I know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna tick people off, um, when I say this, and I, I'm just gonna give, I'm just gonna give you uh, a, a, a reason why I'm gonna give you an example. I had went to a woman, um, and I turned up at her house, and th these two people I went for charms. And uh, I went to their house and this woman was pretty, like, surprised to see me and she was pretty ob oblivious that I was there. And she says, "What? what's your name? Are you booked in or whatever? And I says, yes, yeah, I'm booked in. And your, your husband booked me in. And she says, right, okay, we'll come in and says, sit down. So I sat down on a wooden seat, wooden chair. And she said, don't sit there. Sit away over there. So I, I went and sat down on the the sofa and says, um, so what what's your problems? And I told her that I, I was struggling I was sort of had a eczema and really bad eczema. Um where it was like the skin was broken and stuff and just this is a, a bad time with some skin. And I would put that down to maybe the drink and the drugs and the stress and, and the worry and all that sort of stuff and um just going through put my body through through um stressful time and uh she said right well did you bring the olive oil and i said no because olive oil i wasn't told to bring olive oil so she went and got this olive oil concoction stuff and took it put it in the doritos um tub and rubbed it on me and started to tell me stuff about my mum and she, she, she had said um she she'd said about my she could feel it burning in her in her stomach and that uh, she says why am i getting this she said did your mum pass away did your mum die of cancer and i had said yes and i didn't somebody had said to me don't tell the person anything if they're real they should know all this stuff and so i said didn't say anything and then i said yes and and she said, uh, you, your mum was a warrior and your mum has passed it on to you. And I said, well, that would probably be correct. And then she says, you know, your mummy's standing right beside you, right behind you. And she's got her hand on your shoulder and she's never left you. And um, I found this comforting, but sort of, sort of, you know, freaked me out at the same time as well. And... Um, so just from that, I always thought that I had a guardian angel. I always thought that my mum was watching over me and that my mum, you know, had her hand on me and was there. But it says, it says in the word, which I've just read out there, that the dead know, the dead know nothing. And, um... For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward for the memory of, is forgotten. But that that goes for um the, the the saved as well. When when you're saved and God takes you to heaven, that that person, un, unless God has maybe tells them something when when they're in heaven, that person can no longer interact with you. It's God, it's Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit has their hand upon your life that are that are um protecting you and guiding you and keeping you safe um so just uh just when when while i was in this um like this state of consciousness they call it and to um you know all these uh eastern mystic religions and and all this spirituality and duality and stuff God was starting to work in my life. I was I, I was starting to see just how 
how the world operated. It was corrupt. It was perverted. It was sick. It was vile. And God was God was starting to show me stuff, and I started to 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 go on to the internet and just the stuff that that God revealed to me. It freaked me out, and I was starting to see stuff, and I was starting to tell other people about it, and other people couldn't. They just couldn't see anything wrong with it, or that it was just said, "Oh, it's just conspiracy theories, and that's this and that's that." And um, God was starting to to show me stuff, and whenever I had seen all this stuff, I was starting to get dreams, demonic dreams, over it, and it was really starting to frighten me. And um, I believe God was starting to speak to me as well, and He was He was saying to me, "You know, if you die in your sin, like all this stuff is real. Satan is real." People are worshiping the devil. All this stuff is real. Like, if you were to die tonight, where would you go? Would you go to heaven? Would you go to hell? Um, are you going to believe the truth? Are you going to believe the deception? And you know, God says in Genesis section three that my spirit shall not always strive with man. That's a scary thought, isn't it? If you're unsafe, that, that is a scary thought. That if you were to die right now, who knows? You know, with all this stuff that's going on, I'm not here to, to scare anybody. And that's why I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go 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 into it. But if you were to die right now, where would you go? Where like can you honestly can you honestly ask yourself where where would you would you spend eternity with God? Or would you spend eternity without God? And I knew that there was a heaven and hell. When God had revealed this to me, I believe God had lifted the veil. You know, it, it speaks in the Bible about a veil, that the devil has the devil has blinded us. We've been brainwashed. We've been born into this world, and just when we're growing up, we've been indoctrinated. We've been grown up to just, you know, if something feels natural, if something feels right, then it must be, it must be right. And I'm gonna go with that, and I don't care. And if it feels good to me, then I'm gonna go ahead and um, nobody can tell me otherwise and that is so so wrong um, and the scriptures tells us otherwise um so i just find that the more the more that i seen of the world the more i seen you know how how corrupt the world was i would find myself running back to 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 listen to sermons to listen to music about jesus christ and there was just peace to be found and i just found that the I would just had peace when I was there, and um the the demonic dreams persisted on and off, and you know I believe the Lord was letting the devil attack me, uh because I was searching for answers and he was just saying to me, I am real and I am the way I am the truth and I am the life and like, he was holding his hand out to me and he was saying, I am here, um, I am here. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm drawing you to me. But if you want to continue on with your sin, you, you go on ahead. So, um, those demonic dreams turned into demonic presence in my house. It was the first, it was, it was Friday the 1st of January 2019. And Saturday the 2nd of January 2019. And on the Friday night, the demonic presence in my room, I could feel it. It was so strong and um, it was scaring me. And so I, I had contacted a, a reverend uh, from the Port Iron area and I'd asked him to kind of meet with him. And he said that he was busy, but he could meet me first thing in the morning. And that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to go and meet with him now. I knew I had to get right with Jesus. And um, I don't hold that against him, you know, uh, so I, I said, right, I'll meet you first thing tomorrow morning. And we came to a negotiation. He was going to put it off to sort of a later date, but he got me fitted in on, um, I couldn't get down quick enough. But on the Friday night, uh, I, I went to the cinema. I fled to the cinema. Um, I was sitting there. The cinema was sold out. There must have been about 400 with people maybe whatever sold out people in the cinema and i just felt like a sore thumb even though people weren't looking at me i was sitting at the very back and i just i just knew i shouldn't be here the film started you know the, the film 
had you know sex scenes in it on there was nudity uh, there was cursing in it there was drug use there was violence and i just knew i was like why am i i, I can't watch this i shouldn't watch this and i think I, I think i actually i think i actually fell asleep through a part of it but i stayed there and i, and I watched it but i felt very uncomfortable and I just tried to feel the ignore the tried to ignore the feelings that I was feeling, which I now know was holy conviction. It was holy, God's holy spirit was convicting me, saying, "You shouldn't be here. You need to get right with Christ. Get on your knees and repent of your sins and and be blood bought and blood washed and have your name written in the Lamb's book of life." And um, so I went home that night and I got a really good sleep and. I woke up the next day, but there was just that feeling there. I knew I had to get saved. I knew I, uh, that if I was to, to die on my sin that day, that I would perish and that, that I would go to hell for all eternity, cut off from God. When there's a free gift, when there's an opportunity there, and I could have took it. And I just knew I had to go and see the reverend. So I went and I seen the reverend. And... um. So I went and I, and I seen the reverend and um, I spoke to him and uh, I had a good conversation with him and I, he says, I think you know what you need to do. So I I was trying to put it off, but I went home that night and after watching a few sermons, uh, I was lying in bed and just the holy conviction came down upon me and there was a preacher in one of the sermons that said, repeat after me this prayer. So I had repeated, it was it was a, uh, a preacher was preaching on a video from YouTube in the 1990s and I repeated this prayer and God's Holy Spirit, it was a, a prayer of repentance and asking God to change my life and admitting that I was a sinner and God, God's Holy Spirit came down and just filled, just filled my body and I just, I just broke into tears and, and from there I just started with my own prayer, my prayer of repentance, thanking God f for for what he had done and I asked him, is this what it feels like to feel real love? I had felt love from my mother, I felt love from my dad, my grandparents, I'd felt, you know, genuine love from um, girlfriends and this was just something new, this was agape love as it's called in the bible which is a divine love that nothing can nothing can come between you on this love which was the love of god um so it just felt like there was a a, a major weight was lifted off my shoulders just praise god hallelujah um just even to this day there's just, just a weight lifted off my shoulders and the the, the time any time that there's a weight that is on my shoulders you know what that is that is because i haven't actually taken that issue to the lord in prayer he has said cast your burdens upon the lord those of you who are uh heavy laden and i just thank god that i can go to him in prayer and just leave everything at the foot of the cross and let him take my burdens away and just as that song goes burdens are lifted at calvary and it's all paid for it's, it's just a free gift you just have to accept it um so just i know i've 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 went on a bit and uh I just sort of to be honest when i was writing this it just there was so much more that i could have wrote about and i was just like i don't want to talk about my my past that's why I, you know i just want everybody to come to to know the lord jesus christ to experience what i've experienced and um, let me just let me just read a couple of scripture here. For, just bear with me, please. It says in First Corinthians chapter, uh, First Corinthians, um, three to four. For I, Paul, delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
uh, Romans 10, 9 to 14. And Paul had explained to the church that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For if there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, uh, for the lo same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's amazing. Anybody call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. But I just I just want people to, to realise and this is for everybody that this is a gift of God. That there's no works involved in this. We can't contribute to our salvation whatsoever. And I, I can I can prove that. It says in Ephesians chapter two, eight to nine, for it is by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. So this is solely a gift from God. You know, if God if you give somebody a gift, you know, you're not you're not gonna expect it back. Even if if you give somebody a gift and they've rubbed you up the wrong way or done something, you're not gonna go and ask for it back. And you know this this is this is God this is just the kindness and the, the beauty of, of God. Um let me just move on here. Uh, 1 John 4 and 9 to 10. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. God, Christ's blood is full of, atonement for our sin christ paid it all at calvary is the blood it's all about the blood the blood has has paid the remission of our sins and all we have to do is just accept this free gift and our names will be in the, the lamb's book of life god will send the comforter his holy spirit down to comfort us to mold us to guide us to lead us to teach us and um what a beautiful gift the be the best gift that could ever could ever be given um jesus is just he's just beautiful uh act acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 and 38 so this 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 is what peter is saying and this is what we need to to do then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift the gift of the Holy Ghost and that's what we need to do we need we need to acknowledge we're a sinner we need to repent of our sins and from there God will God will come in and he will work and he will change our lives and we need to we need to acknowledge our our weaknesses. Um, for Christ has said, those that deny Christ on earth, that He will deny those in the presence of His Father. And if you deny God, God God is still God no matter what. So there's still that choice to make to to accept. The truth or the deception to accept eternity with God or eternity without God to be saved or to be unsaved to accept Jesus on, on eternal life or accept Satan on eternal damnation on, on, on perish and you know it says in the Bible that God 
God doesn't want anybody to perish. God doesn't want anybody to, to, to go to hell. But God had made everything perfect. And, you know, and, and it says in God's word that God made everything perfect. And just through pride, it was through, through, through Lucifer, through Satan, through his pride and, and through the, the deception um, of Adam and Eve were deceived and that out of the, the forbidden fruit, the disobeyed God. And from this, this is where the downfall has happened to man. And this is why it is appointed unto man to die. So, folks, this is crucial. Like, I can't express how crucial this is. Um, um, I just, I'm just going to bring, bring it to a close, and I just pray, just pray that this is spoken to, to somebody. Um, you know, if you, if you feel that drawing, if you feel that tugging and, and that drawing where. Where maybe you know some of the words that that I've that I've spoken, that is the Holy Spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Just want to stress this: this is not Christ is not religion. Christ is a living relationship. This is a supernatural relationship that we have with God of the universe. But we are God is not the universe. We are not one with the universe. We are we are simple simple human beings whom God just loves so much and wants to, to walk with us and to to have relationship with us and, and speak to us daily. And you know the, the supernatural gifts of the spirit that God wants to, to reveal to us, you know and I've been baptized in the water, I've been baptized with fire, it says it says in Matthew, um, indeed, baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He will baptize you with water and with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So, just, just pray that this has spoken to somebody and um, if if it's speaking to, to somebody just to say this wee prayer after me you just close your eyes Lord Jesus Christ I come to you in full repentance I acknowledge and confess that I am a sinner and that I am in need of a saviour. And that I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the Son of God. And I want to walk with you. And pray to you. And serve you. And I want to know you personally. And I want you to come into my life and change it. And I want to spend eternity with my Saviour. And I ask all these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So thank you for listening, everybody. And I just pray that, that that has spoke to somebody today. And we'll just uh we'll just close an, an overall prayer and just thank the Lord for what he's doing and in people's lives and and what he's gonna do in, in your life and I and I have faith in that. So we'll just Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I've been able to give this testimony today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know that you, you've been speaking to people through through this testimony, Lord. 
and just thank you Lord for the change that you've done in my life and the joy and the peace that you've put in my life and Lord I just worship you and adore you and I just want to get closer to you Lord just continue to to renew me and just as we said at the start all things uh, become new and we just thank you Lord that you're going to save souls Lord through this testimony we just we just praise your your mighty name we just ask these things in Jesus name Amen praise the Lord hallelujah keep praising Jesus keep looking to Jesus and I'm sorry that I've, I've went on a bit and sort of got a bit sidetracked there but I just pray that you just you just bird with me there so just thank you for listening um thank you amen God bless you all and keep praising Jesus.